Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you may be, or good evening or good night. This is Jen at Jen's Arty Inclinations, a place to create, share and play. Here we are, Defemeremba Day 9, and today is collage fodder and junk mail. And the surprise animal is partridge. So I was trying to find a pair, but none of the pairs in any of the junk mail was any good. But that's okay. The way that I start this off is I try and choose pages from magazines or junk mail, in this case junk mail, that have lots of colour on them, lots of images. For this particular one, that's what I'm looking for. Sometimes I might look for just text. Other times I might be looking for colours. And then I do have some other fodder, just one of my many little stashes that things just get put away in after projects. So I pulled out some of those pieces as well in case I need them. And I do use a couple of them at the end. So anywho, here I am tearing up all of these influential people, apparently Sydney's top 100 power influencers or something or other <laughs> from a few years back, maybe even a year ago, just started tearing it up. So I really loved that blue in this. Now there's a few ways that you can do this. You can actually go for just all the same colours. You can tear them up randomly. You can tear them up fairly evenly like I've done with the green piece there. Uh, you can, what else can you do? Oh yeah, different textures of paper. It's also pretty cool if you add in torn fabric as well as the paper when you're putting this down. So yeah, just a few ideas. I put them into bunches because I hadn't decided yet if I was going to do a colour wave across the page. So like do, you know, maybe all blues into greens into multicoloured, you know, bush-like things or if I was doing them randomly. And then in the short time that it took me to go from putting some Mod Podge down, that's the glue I'm using there, in the short time that it took me from putting that down to actually sticking the paper down, I'd completely forgotten that I had any of those ideas and I just started sticking them down randomly. So this is all you're doing. You're just filling the page. It's like that cool one that Louise did the other day where she cut up that paper into really beautifully even little squares and then put it back down on the page in a different order. Oh, I just love that look of deconstructing a picture and then recreating it to look as something different. Anywho, yeah, here's the rocket science bit, you know, sticking it all down. And uh, here I am just finishing it off. Gee, I love the blues in that blue paper. It's like an ocean when you put it down like that. And look, yeah, at the very last minute, my Mod Podge wasn't coming out. It obviously had a bit stuck in the spout because then I got a massive big globule. But you know what? It made me think, well, I'll do this properly and I'll actually seal it over the top because I'm going to fold the whole thing in half. So that'll just help keep it all down. I did spread it with my fingers because I find that I get a thinner coat of my Mod Podge. Now here's the next step, outlining all of your torn edges. That's all this is. So I usually do it with an outline texture. Texture, outline texture to create the texture. <laughs> and uh, oh, this is just, I think, a laundry marker or a kitchen marker that I just grabbed out of my kitchen drawer that I use for, you know, marking things in the freezer and stuff. You know, that's not necessary. If it's a permanent marker, that's fine because it will write over the shiny surfaces and it will hold if you're putting anything over the top of it, which I did do. So what you have to remember when you're outlining your edges just run your hands over if you're not quite sure if it's a torn edge or not, and that'll help you feel the edge, obviously. And the other thing is, if you're a right-hander like me, work top left to bottom right. So left to right, top to bottom, and then that way you won't risk smudging on any shiny surfaces that you have there. Left-hander, left top corner to bottom left. You know, that's what you're looking at. So just finishing it off here and folding it. And you know what? When you seal it with Mod Podge, it all sticks down really nicely. <laughs> so yeah, I shouldn't be lazy. I should do that more often. I mean, I was still impatient because I did actually dry them with the heat gun. Before I had a heat gun, I just used to keep a hairdryer beside my desk. So there's my little partridge. And 
he was a perfect little topper for the topper cover I guess is what I'm saying I popped him onto some coffee dyed dictionary page that I had so I was just working out you know where to tear him and I liked this side of it because it had one of those squares you know those bigger dictionaries I like that interest in the texture in the texture in the text in the background Alrighty, so what have we got next hmm oh yeah I had to splatter because what I've got right there is exactly what I used to do to cover my books at school when I was in high school used to do this on the weekends because what we had to do before the year started was you had to cover your books and you had to do a title page every class asked you to do that my kids have never done title pages and they've never covered books. I guess they're all too, you know, needing to go through the curriculum too much to actually get to that point, which is such a shame. I loved doing that. Sometimes I hated it, you know. <laughs> you did have to do it. Like it, it wasn't an optional thing. So I remember when I got smart, one year I actually just wrote the word science on the cover and did a hand-drawn squiggle line all around it. And when the teacher questioned it, I went, but that's my title page. It's my art. You know, I was, yeah, a bit of a smarty pants. Anyway, I am literally just playing with ink. And you know what I love about watching me do this? Somehow it looks like I'm one of those professional people who we all see who teach us how to use all the inks and do all the techniques. And, and I'm so not. I was just working it out as I went along. But it looked good. So, yeah, I was happy with that. Anyway. I actually, you can see, I did flip the book over then because I was going to put the partridge on one side, but then I really loved the way that the oxide ink worked out on that side. So then I flipped it over because then I've still got that side. So here he is, a little bit of ink splatter just on him. I thought I'd do just him and just leave the dictionary page with just the coffee. And I thought a jaunty angle is what he needed. And just as I was putting it down, I had a last minute thought and I put some cheesecloth down. You know how I've got a bit of a cheesecloth obsession? Hmm, I don't know what that says about me. Anywho, gluing that down and there is my cover. So he's pretty much done. Using my bone folder does flatten him out. However, I have actually popped him under books after this video. So I've popped him under books and a brick that I've got covered with wrapping paper because that way it doesn't catch. And then he'll be nice and flat for the morning to go into my book. But you'll see it all finished. And so I just did some stamping down the edges because I just felt that finished off the inside and I didn't feel like I needed to pop a bit of writing paper on it then. I really love that effect when I do it a lot. You see it in a lot of my flips where there's just a bit of stamping down the edge or in a, in a little column and it just feels like it makes it look all finished. So now I'm just doing massively quick background. I thought just splatters today since I had so much fun splattering and I wanted to keep with the simplicity of the project. So do you remember that little other piece that I pulled out at the beginning and it had some fruit on it? So there is a pear on that. So there you go. There is a pear on the page for the partridge. Pear, partridge, page, possum, poppet. I don't know. I was trying to think of other words that went with it, but none of them did. All right. So <laughs> I got a big glue globule when I was putting my lace down there, but that's all right. More cheesecloth. If, you, if you're stuck, throw some cheesecloth at it. All right. So that was just a really simple pocket on this page. And then he slips in my little project quite neatly and quite nicely. I hope you enjoyed. I can't believe I'm still managing to keep up with these daily. And, uh, but yeah, it's fun. I'd love it if you could leave me a comment below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed what you saw today. And of course, please subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you next time. And in the meantime, keep creating. Enjoy.